it's the 10th anniversary of Hurricane Sandy. Oh, yeah. Here and it's uh, this weekend, the 29th of October 2012 is when it hit. And Tuesday, yeah, it was a Monday when that hit. So the Tuesday, October 30th is when we started to see all the images of the Jersey Shore fucked up. Um, most uh, that area of Queens where my family is and everything was, you know, completely underwater and burning at the same time. Um, yeah, there, there was a lot of fucking damage through. It was coming up the East Coast. It, it, it messed up the Caribbean. It, it messed up a bit of the East Coast, but really just took its toll on the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut area before I think uh, the article I read said it's like then finally get winding up in Ot- Ontario Canada where it killed two people it's like like how did you die from a like a low pressure system at that point in Ontario from you a- know why because they're like by these places like a low pressure system that hits to a place that's not prepared for is could be devastating you know like remember Hurricane Irene that came through like after Sandy it might have been after Sandy or before Sandy, but like everyone's like, oh, this big storm is going to come and it's going to hit the city. And like it didn't do much to us. And then it went north and just destroyed like upstate New York and like parts of Massachusetts because they weren't ready for that amount of rainfall. And it washed out all the roads and it was just devastating. It wasn't a hurricane. So like if you're not prepared, you're not prepared. I guess. I mean, like that's the, the hurricane that just hit Nova Scotia. What, like a month ago? Like they weren't ready for that shit. Right. Uh, I want to show you this here, too. So what I'm about to show you, um, when Sandy was hitting, I, I came home from work. I was at home. It was a Monday night. This thing was uh, starting to hit uh, the, the whole area. And the first thing we started to see was that there was this crane in Manhattan that fell off its mounting and snapped oh, over this. and was hanging off a building on uh, uh, it, during the, right when the hurricane's really starting to hit. So the news cameras from all these angles were wondering to see if this thing was going to collapse right down on the street. So this I crane, remember them watching this and I remember watching this on the news. I'm like, well, you know what? If it is, you guys probably shouldn't be standing on the street. Like, that's all I remember saying. Right. So I want to show you this part here. Where is it? Um, OK. Looking down Manhattan here. This is West 57th Street. OK. This is right on the corner of 57th and 7th. This building where this crane is, is hanging from. Yeah. That's being built is what they replaced XM. This was, was the building. I thought that was that building over there. This is the building that we were in for the old XM studios. They demolished that except the um uh what the what was the piano place called? Oh, oh Steinway. Steinway. Except the Steinway room, that stayed there cuz it, apparently it's a historical landmark, so they couldn't do anything. So they had to build around it. The building we were in for XM was completely demolished. They built this, and it's an eyesore, this building. it's a, a, I don't know if it's an office or a hotel. I think it's a hotel. But yeah. it's one of those weird buildings that New York is doing now where it's just a rectangle. There's no features. There's no design. There's no uh, outside artwork, you know, like the Chrysler building has those uh, eagles or and some They're buildings. They're gargoyles. You can see those gargoyles from the ground. They're huge. They're awesome. Right. They didn't do any of that. It's just a giant rectangle that go- has a square top. Not very aerodynamic, not very good looking by architectural terms. But there it was. And this was the XM building. And I'm sitting there watching I'm like, oh, our old our old uh, our old studio and everything. This whole thing's going to collapse because I was wondering if that here I got, I'll put this right. Because That would have like taken out a lot it would have taken out a lot collapsed. so i'm thinking oh it's not pointing on there but i'm thinking on the right hand side there right you see the crane the crane is bent backwards it was supposed to be the other way on top of the building that support shaft right there for the crane if that thing ripped off right would would have fallen it would, it would have not only just on stuff onto 57th it would have hit the parker meridian hotel across there it probably over, would have landed at least three or four blocks like that's what i'm saying it would be over yeah. 56th maybe into 55th so you're looking at at least two blocks there of damage of this thing coming down now if it ripped that and that thing got unstable you would start to see almost like you know the twin towers thing where that thing is gonna fall apart they were watching this forever until flooding and the fires started breaking out then they didn't 
bother go- going back to the crane again. You saw this for about two hours, and mm-hmm. then when when the shit was really hitting the fan, they never went back to this thing again. Um, so what happened after at that point was uh, around six thirty or something is when the storm was fully kicking in. You had the ocean going crazy. They were saying like eleven to sixteen foot. <laughs> storm surges. surges and shit yeah and it the just cars were like blocking the tunnel like floating in the hut in the holland tunnel and shit yeah it kicked everything's ass like everything uh jersey shore manhattan uh queens brooklyn what have you i was out of work for like two weeks and i worked in manhattan like it was wild because it's all uh the substation flooded and when they couldn't get our power back on they're like yeah it's gonna take a while for power to get back on yeah, some places were um, at least ten days before they even were to get some sort of um, lifeline support, water, power, whatever in there. And then still, this took a while. Yep. To to do all this, Staten Island too. Staten Island is a man-made island, and it's lower than the water level in most parts. So this was just turning into a, a gigantic pool. I remember when that transformer exploded. Yep. All of this stuff was because I was at my friend's house because he was having like a, a a hurricane party, which was basically me saying like, eh, I don't want to be a uh, home alone during a hurricane. Can I hang out with you guys? So I stayed over there, and I remember being like, Hey guys, the walls turning blue. We just lost a transformer somewhere, and then yeah, all the power went out. Yeah, everything was uh, was devastated. So um, you're seeing this here. Look at this stuff. Like this, all these all boats. boats yep. Like how did they know to go there? But they all just piled up. Um, so yeah, that happened. Manhattan, the lower part of Manhattan up till I think what in the twenties from the lower part of Manhattan were, was underwater. The subways were all underwater. There was no power. It was weird yeah. to see the, the side shots from Jersey and then the aerial shots where you see midtown and up has power, but then the lower tip of Manhattan was completely yeah. It was like dark. it was like a, a literal line line because the because because New York City's in power. It, it's group. a grid. So like each thing is like a cube. So if like one cube goes out, sometimes the one next to it will go out. So like you could literally watch the city like kind of power down if there's like a power outage. So if you looked from especially from where I was in Brooklyn, if you looked across the river, it was like light, 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 and then just black. Right, so it's kind of creepy. Because, like, you know that there's people in the area where there's no lights. <laughs> yeah, so they Fucked were, up. and it was really a, going to be a problem because the salt water they felt was going to really damage the subway system to the point that they may not have service there for a long time. Like, they were worried about that whole subway system having to be re-gutted and redone before they could even get it open. Yeah, and that I would mean, have been I- so detrimental to the entire city. Yeah, I mean, not going to lie, like, it was really bad where I live because you need to take the subway into the city and the salt water just really damaged the tunnels. Uh, We actually, you know, uh, we complain a lot about the the shutdown and everything because of the pandemic. But thankfully, everything got shut down during the pandemic because they took something that was supposed to be like a four and a half year project and got it done in a year because no one was no one was out there. So it actually like kind of worked out to the benefit because it was like one train going back and forth and switching. It was such a fucking nightmare. Right. Uh, Uh, Coach Quincy, Eric, did you use Master Poe's evacuation plan? Um, If you haven't heard that, look on. It should be on YouTube. If it's not, let me know. I'll find it from the archive and I'll put it up on the uh, the ONA YouTube channel. But no, we did a spoof thing about. um, uh, I think it was back when Hurricane Katrina was happening, and I think we they came up with the idea to have Steve go and talk to Poe as what Poe because he wanted to be the head of security and everything that we had. Yeah. He's like, what would you do in the case of a mass evacuation if a hurricane was coming to the city? And I think he said something about on the lines of trying to figure out how to get a helicopter to the top of the building <laughs> that we'd yeah. go up there to evacuate. And Steve goes, really? During hurricane? Okay. He's like, well, how else are we going to get out there if the thing's flooded? There's no power. Yeah. Send a send one of the most unstable aircrafts that you can during a high wind situation to come to the top of a building to rescue somebody. Hey, you know what? 
you think that was a really bad idea, but then they made that movie. It was started the rock and was called skyscraper. It made like a billion dollars. Well, no, there's one point where the building fell into another building. He ran up the side like a bridge and got into the other building. Yeah, That was master Poe, the rock. (laughs) (laughs) That was master. Dwayne, the Poe Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Got to get everything. So, yeah, look online if you can find the ONA bit of Master Poe's evacuation or Master Poe's hurricane. Try any of those words. I don't remember what it was exactly labeled, but uh, that is hilarious. Um, Reckless Butter in the in the chat saying, is that the storm you guys did anarchy radio playing the scenario scenarios out listening to Gangnam Style? Yes, that was the, the, uh, the storm that we did all of that. So... Storm, you know, really fucked up uh, Manhattan. And what drove me crazy with Opie at that point was he's like, oh, we drove down there, you know, uh, him and somebody else because some of the people were staying in the city. I wasn't going to stay in the city because I own a house. I wasn't going to stay in the city like it was a snowstorm to so I could be there the next day. I have a house. I have pets. And you know, it's, it's like I needed to be there. And that's where I just I, I just think of like when like nine eleven happened and how like you couldn't get places and that's why I was like I'm only going places that is within walking distance of my apartment so that way if I have to get back I can right you know like you don't want to get trapped if you somewhere. can find the October thirtieth broadcast maybe the thirty first somewhere around there because remember they postponed Halloween because of it's all funny of this it's seaside heights and the sea is at the side of the heights correct um. Where Opie saying it's like, oh, you know, it wasn't that big. A, he said something along the lines. I remember him saying it's like, oh, it wasn't that big a deal. I went down uh, town. It's like, yeah, there's some flooding and the power's out, but it really didn't do a, enough to cause a problem. And then as the days went forward, you saw the devastation that as in the clip here that you're seeing. Like, look how bad the Jersey Shore is. Look how bad yeah, no one, a lot of New you, Jersey was. Like, you know, the because the, the camera crews literally couldn't get out there. Right. Like usually they're out there like standing in the storm. But that's not what he like based it joke. on. He based it on the fact that he drove down the West Side Highway, went down to the area of Manhattan that was dark, and he's like, oh well, the power's out. They'll get the power back on soon, and the flooding will recede. This wasn't that big a deal. I never, I'll never forget that he thought it was never that big a deal. And then you see all this devastation, uh, especially in Seaside Heights, that pier that's in the background that had oh, yeah, the giant the Ferris pier. wheel. Oh, here we Look go. That, yeah. Right there. Eric. Ferris wheel, the roller coasters, everything. And it all fell into the ocean. It was like that move. What was that Spielberg movie? 1943, 42. I didn't see that movie. Where the Ferris wheel fell off and then started rolling down the pier in a circle with the people on it. And then it went into the ocean. I want to see that. That's you a, should. It's a, a terrible movie? movie. It's Dan. No, it's a Spielberg kind of wartime comedy. It was Dan Aykroyd and I forget who else. Maybe Tom Hanks. No, that was Dragnet. Uh, Dan Aykroyd and somebody. Oh, it was Belushi. Dan Aykroyd and Belushi. And yeah, the, that scene where they, the first wheel comes unhinged and then just is rolling down the pier with the people in it screaming as it goes into the ocean. Uh, funny then. Not so funny looking at it on the Jersey Shore here. But yeah, so the Jersey Shore was devastated. Then we had this area where my family was, which is, uh, Gittles knows the area, the Rockaways, uh, which is a, a peninsula off the island, the head of the island there. And it's Rockaway, it's Roxbury, it's Breezy Point. And I had family all through that area for, God, decades. My family's been from, from that part. And they just had all of this shit where the ocean met the bay and then everything caught on fire. So while the water is just raging, (laughs) all these buildings are catching on fire. They lost like 60 to 100 homes in this area because of uh, how terrible everything was. And they were doing rescues through uh, like the Army Corps of Engineers and the Coast Guard and the National Guard were all out there on those inflatable uh, rafts with the with the motors yeah, on the, the back. Like the, like the hydroponic, not the hydroponic, the... Um, uh, the like pontoon called? kind of thing. Yeah, the pontoon boats. They rescuing people off the, the second Hydro story of their homes. Yeah, the, off the second stories of their homes. And this was uh, the results the next day when you could look at it, look at all of that. Yeah, it was fucked up. While the ocean water's raging, everything's burning on top of it. And I had to go out there because my family was out there to see what damage that they all had. And I remember work, because ONA were goofing on me and stuff on the the air, management was taking it seriously. And they weren't believing. I said, look, I'm not going to be in this week. I need to go deal with this stuff. 
and they were getting mad at me. They, they wanted proof that I was where I said I was. So I had to take fucking photos of me wa- uh, walking through like, you know, waist high water and I'm taking stupid photos in front of all of this shit just to send to the managers. Like, here get you go. There. I'm get there. Yeah, here I go. Here you go. I'm here where I said where I am. I'm going to be here for a while. This is going to take some time. Never forget that. That's, ugh, I was so fucking furious with, the, with them. Yeah, dude, that shit was fucked up. Yeah, it was. Like, they didn't understand any We're of this We're trying shit to get, happening. like, emergency funding and, like, fucking Ted Cruz and shit was just like, I don't know. Should we give them any money? I don't think so. It's a bunch of Democrats. And then they cut off all funding. Well, remember, too, they were saying that they weren't going to call it Hurricane Sandy. They were calling yeah, it Super Storm. Super, super Storm Sandy. Because I think it was like because it was like around Category 1. It might have been was over, a little under. It was over a 1. But what they were trying to do was uh, for insurance reasons. This was going to cost them a ton. And it, it wound up, I think the estimate was like $20 billion dollars at the start of this thing that they were estimating that this is what the insurance companies were going to have to pay and they kept calling it Superstorm and then getting the news to call the government officials were calling it Superstorm then the news started calling it Superstorm because that was the narrative they were trying to play so that it was like oh it's not technically a hurricane so that the insurance company didn't have to pay for certain things if it wasn't a hurricane if it was a superstorm, they didn't have to do as much. So they kept trying to say that. Then it got declared official. They said, this is the unofficial title of what this storm is. It is Hurricane Sandy. And they wound up having to do all of this stuff. Isn't it wild how like the insurance can like change shit like that? And you're like, no, this is like what it was. And they're like, yeah, but we don't know yeah. if it was. And all the time, look what happened with my studio uh, and stuff last year with that with that hurricane, with the flooding. It's like, well, they at first they're like, well, did you have flood insurance? I go, no, I'm not legally required. I'm in technically where my house is, is part of the Appalachian Mountains. It's not all the way up there, yeah. but I'm in, you know, a, 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 a stream of the of the mountainous area where it is what it is. I'm well above sea level. I'm not near a body of water. I'm Eric's not in like the highest point in like the northeast next to Mount Washington. I've been to his house. It's on top of a hill. It's yeah. crazy. So. If I'm not legally required to have flood insurance, you can't hold penalize me. It's not like I was living on the beach again down in Florida where you're legally supposed to have hurricane insurance, flood insurance, whatever to live there. You can't hold that against me and penalize me for that stuff because you're like, well, you should have had. I could have had a million things, but I wasn't required to have it based on the laws and your zoning. So you can't penalize me for that. Dude, insurance is fucking ridiculous. So I know a person who was working on the legal team right. uh, for the insurance for the World Trade Center. Right. And uh, yeah, they try to count. Eat, they like, would you say 9-11 was a singular terrorist attack or multiple for New York? Uh, I'd say it's multiple. Yeah, and that's what the argument is. Yeah. Does each plane count as a separate terrorist attack, or does the whole thing encompass the whole day since it was all planned as one attack? It it, uh, it encompasses everything because it was also D.C., and it was that area of Pennsylvania and, and other things that they found. But yeah, but the, found- lawsuits, the people who were insuring the World Trade Center tried to say it was two separate attacks because it was two different planes that hit, so that way it Two different planes covered. hit two different buildings. <laughs> Yeah, I know, but like the way that the insurance was trying to like, it, this is all crazy like legal shit. But yeah. like that's just the way the insurance was doing on the building. They're like, no, well, I get it. One was a separate thing. It's like, but it, dude, it was all part of one thing. <laughs> I get no, I get it. I I, I get it. Wild. It it is fucked up how they do all of that stuff. Um, oh, poor trash star. Sorry, I was joking about Irene before. I didn't mean to, if you were traumatized by a landslide. I'm sorry. I know that that was really fucking devastating. <laughs> Wait, what? What is that? Trash uh, tar is like trash I, I moved landslide. out of the flood Irene. zone, but I'm uh, so tra- traumatized by Irene landslide and Sandy that I'm seriously considering uh, getting it anyway. Um, sometimes you know, if I had an area that if I was in an area that might be prone to more of that stuff, I would consider mm-hmm. it, even though I'm not legally required. Especially if I was living near the beach, I would get it, even if it said I didn't have to have it. Uh, that was a problem for a lot of the people in the Jersey Shore. When it came in through the through the canals and the channel stuff to the areas that were lower, like Atlantic Highlands and, and um, past Seaside Heights, past the beachfront stuff, when you're going into the community stuff there, they got fucked and flooded because they weren't required to have flood insurance. And the insurance company goes, well, you should have had flood insurance or something. Yeah. And, you know, then the state has to uh, step in and... <laughs> 
you know, FEMA only does so much before the federal government comes in and says, all right, here's funding for the state to cover all this other shit. Um, so yeah, they got fucked over. Uh, I want to show you some of the stuff uh, when I went over to uh, Breezy Point area. Obviously, I didn't take this aerial shot. I, well, and for people who don't know, like Breezy Point is literally one road in, one road out. It's the same road. It's a very, very uh, exclusive neighborhood in the Far Rockaways. Like the only people that know there, everybody knows each other. So like, and it's all firefighters, right? And a lot of the people there. So like, it was just, it was very devastating because they just could not get what they needed to get there to help them. And that's right? Why it was so devastating? They just couldn't do it because the road was gone literally gone 70 percent of that neighborhood is firefighters police and first responders almost all of them were involved the families in there were all tied into uh rescue efforts for september 11th yeah and yeah that that whole area has just been pummeled with just tragedy between sandy and then uh yeah 9 11 that plane that crashed after 9 11 that crashed into like the that was in bell harbor area, like six yeah. months there that was bell harbor that hit right near where my dad grew up like that was just a lot of crazy shit in that area yeah it the it, yeah, you're right. A lot of tragedy, a lot of stuff. On the north shore of Breezy Point, they had some girders that were melted or formed together, <laughs> and they put a cement base on it, and it looks like a cross. So they took some girder for people yeah. that um, that served to help out the rescued efforts. Some of them died, too, you know, that were yeah. there as first responders. So they have that giant cross makeshift thing in a cement thing, a cement stand. Uh facing the direction where you could clearly see where the twin towers were from breezy point so yeah that area is um yeah there's just a lot of heartache in that area it's just yeah it's just, it's just uh, rough they, they've been through a lot in the last 20 years so this was the area this was like the a day or two later they got an aerial shot of the the fire escape of all this was just set ablaze and completely gone um <laughs> Yeah, so this was me driving in the next day. I had to get special permission, by the way, to get Look over that there. One. That's like what that was like when you went back in time after you went through the clock tower and you drove through the fence and you had the not go the other picture. You get the hay. <laughs> I'm Darth Vader, and I start playing Van Halen music. Yeah. No, I was a Back to the Future reference. That's what was. I'm talking about. He came out. Oh, remember, he had that's the right. mask on and he plays the music. Yeah. Um, no, so I had to get permission to go over there because the military was over there, the police were over there. I think the when I was there, we were on the back of a of a big truck, and the truck in front of us had the uh, the mayor and the governor there at the same time. But yeah, I had to get permission and show proof that you know we have property over there, family, all of that stuff to to let me in. But uh, yeah, these are some of the photos that, that I took from. It's just all fucked up. Like, yeah, this Ugh. I had to send to that work. That guy washed up on the beach. I know. Look at that guy. I had to send photos to work to management to prove I w- where I was. I love how you had the, oh, see, face. Yeah. Like, I was I'm pissed. Not coming to w- I know. It's freezing cold. The water's freezing. <laughs> You're wadding through that. And then I got, I'm like, oh, here's a selfie. So, you know, fucking Gary can see that I was actually at work. Sorry, I shouldn't have said his name, but there it was. But, uh, fucking Gary. Yeah, look at this. Porches and stuff just ripped off of these houses. Because a lot of this area doesn't... They have a main street, a main thoroughfare, but then the blocks are all just uh, sidewalks. Yeah, it's very small. Yeah. They have the uh, the crosswalks. It's the same thing they have on like Long Beach, where like the streets are very long and there's not cross streets. They, there's these little alleys that just go behind houses so that you can jut through to different blocks without having to walk a mile and a half around the block. Right. So... Um, this is getting into the fire area that I'm walking through. This is the next day. It's still smoldering. Not only can you smell it, but you can see little areas where there's just smoke coming out of little patches of whatever's yeah. still burning under this. Um, there's a photo I have coming up somewhere in here where there was this house that looks like it has giant cannonball size holes in it. And the uh, one of the, uh, the police officers told me that there was an area... Of uh, of breezy that was getting repeatedly struck by lightning, so you had floodwaters, fire, and lightning hitting it. And this house, it's a two story house, was uh, 
showing you, look, here's another photo, Giddles, that I had to send to work. Like, yeah, I'm here. That's the same face. You're just photoshopping yourself into these pictures, Eric. Uh, That's the same face. Oh, uh, my God. It's crazy, dude. It looks like those fucking pictures of, like, a war zone, like, you know, the before and after when they come through after it's been bombed. Like, this is nuts. There's a couple of celebrities that have families here or they have their beach houses here. One is, um, I'm forgetting his name, Paul... He's he was uh, Paulie Walnuts in The Sopranos. Tony. Oh, d- uh, didn't Sco- he just die? Scala- yeah, he did. Scala- he had a place there that that got destroyed for this. Uh, Steve Buscemi has family in this area. Steve Buscemi's a firefighter. Like yep. he's you know he's known around the city of like you know if there's emergencies and he's available like he'll show up in gear like. Oh yeah, this uh, I guess I took a video clip of it too. What George? But this lady, look at the. I felt bad for this lady in the green here. This lady in the green was looking for any parts of her house and, and belongings laying anywhere. Yeah. Coach Quincy, Tony Sirico, thank you. I, I couldn't yeah, think of the, uh, the gentleman's name. But I felt bad. She was just taking sticks and pushing through, trying to find everything. One guy I remember I was, was like, what would you do? I wouldn't even know what to do. I'd be like, where's my cat? I found my cat. I guess I lost all my shit. Like, yeah, there is. Um, I remember there was one guy who was pointing out that just hours before him and his kids were kneeling on their couch by the front window of their house. And he said, then we saw the fires coming down, you know, jumping from house to house because the wind was so bad. And then they they evacuated and he came back and he's like, you know, less than 24 hours ago, we were just kneeling on this couch looking out the window and there was nothing left. Like yeah. you had the very base bottom of the couch next to the cinder blocks of what was the front of their house. Yeah, oh, there it is. The, this is the house. Oh Jesus! Look at that. It does look like cannonballs. It looks like the side of our ship when we're playing Sea of Thieves. Right. So yeah, the the one cop was showing me this in another place. So lightning. Somebody has. I couldn't find the clip online, but I know somebody. Maybe it was a a local there that has it, but had phone footage. A video clip of the lightning coming down through the fire during the storm was going on so this i guess was one of the places that had the lightning tearing right through it that's crazy yeah yeah i don't think you've showed me that picture before like that looks like a war these all look like i mean this looks like footage from the ukraine right now yeah it looks it's- like bombing There is a uh, wild man. I'm glad. I mean, I'm glad like, you know, your family was, you know, ultimately safe through all this and other than other shit that right. happened. But it's rough. Yeah, it was. Uh, there's a. Oh, this. This was my dad's aunt's property. Right now. Yeah. We didn't own it anymore. They want when she died. My uh, my uh, dad and his brothers wound up selling uh, the property. But look at that. The house is completely gone. That was there. What house? There's yeah. no house there, Eric. <laughs> I still, to this day, I'll have to ask around, but to this day, nobody knew where the house went. That was the problem. It you went s- into the ocean. But you see other people's damage stuff when the houses are moving off their foundation. Look, this porch was part of this thing over there. And, you know, like you could see. Your house was, that house was Flanders house when the hurricane hit Springfield. It's just gone. Yeah. You could piece That's together true, what parts were where to where it went. Like you had, you, all right. It's roughly in yeah, this there's area. There's like a milk crate, three cinder blocks, and a piece of siding. Yeah, like that's all that's left. They didn't know where this thing went. Like it sucked into the ocean, and that was the last they saw of it, or it flew away. Because like, what's on the other side? Like, because we're looking obviously towards the backyard. What's like this way that the cam from the angle you're taking the camera? Oh, picture all right. From? So Is- where I'm standing. Uh, is it the ocean behind? Yes, you? I know a you little. Can't turn it. Okay. A little bit behind me is a, is another sidewalk, and then if you're facing that way, it's just maybe like a football field's yard length of beach before you get to the ocean. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, that makes sense then, because I was like, if it got pushed back, it should be like in that house. But if you weren't on the waterfront, it should have been stuck in the other house. But if there was nothing there, then yeah, that your house, that house just got swept away. The Apollo hook came down and just pulled it right off the stage. Right. It's gone. Uh, not Uncle Phil in the chat saying that house straight up an atom. They, it, it certainly did. Oh, Rob was out in Long Beach. So, yeah, my friends D and Chris, uh, like their house was fucking wrecked out there. Like the dogs were barking at the ocean as it was like creeping into the house. Yeah. It's pretty bad. 
Long Beach got really nailed by it too. It was pretty devastating. It did. Uh, I forgot. Oh, the, see, the ocean didn't listen to the sign, Eric. <laughs> The this ocean is can't the problem. Read. The ocean they just, can't the read. The storm couldn't read. I forgot what this was, and now I remember what this was because I looked at that photo earlier today when I was putting the folder together. I'm like, I don't remember what this was. I remember it now. Is that like cleanup? This was the that night, that first night that I was there. Uh, there's a big beach area near all there. It's uh, is it Rise Beach, Reese Beach, R I Reese Beach, Reese Beach Park. Okay, that huge parking lot that they have became a dedicated trash heap. So mm-hmm. all the stuff they were doing, that that's the night crew. I remember trying to drive back to New Jersey that night. They had um, they were bringing in stadium lighting and everything. So everything they were trying to clear out of the roads and whatever, they were dumping into this parking lot but separating it by whatever they needed to separate it by for pieces, you know, however they dispose of it. But yeah, I, it, until just now, I couldn't remember what the hell this was and why I took a photo of it. They were it, dumping but. a lot of this stuff at the um, uh, William Floyd Air Space also. That's right, a lot down. of that's ab- uh, abandoned too. Yeah, yeah. so like I, I remember because my dad was still working for the government at the time, so he would just take me down there. We'd drive through and just look at like just just piles and just piles of just trash and it's all just waterlogged oh yeah and it was also like 30 degrees because it was like the yeah. coldest october in a long time so like not only was everyone's house just demolished everybody was literally freezing because they were soaking wet and it was 30 something degrees it was just it was really bad it that's pretty fucked up that was my problem and that's why i looked like that in those photos because it was freezing i'm walking through waist high you know ocean water and I have to send photos back to to justify why I wasn't at work uh, showing all this stuff and it was yeah you have gloves you have insulation you have uh, um, you got slickers on all of this shit and you're freezing because the wind is still whipping around just because the hurricane was done didn't mean you still had you know you didn't have other winds uh, trailing that thing so you had winds you had freezing rain and, and cold and it was yeah it was just a it was just terrible. Oof. You know, where I was in Jersey, had uh, we had a bunch of um, power lines down and trees, and, and that uh, they were all pretty much in the streets. And then, uh, like, the worst people had was maybe it took out your fence, you know, if you were near the park or something. But everywhere you went, just because the trees were down, the wires were down. So yeah, even if you live wires everywhere, you couldn't move some of those tree things because there's wires everywhere. So you, you had to wait for. Um, I guess it was like PSE and G and then whoever does the kind of debris removal would go through there. They'd shut the whole grid down for your block or blocks, whatever you do. Cut all the lines. They just they were just cutting them. They weren't even trying to repair them. They were just hacking them all out. Got the trees and, and everything else out of all the roads so you could get somewhere. And then it took like another week before all the lines were coming in. I was seeing trucks from Arizona and all these other oh, yeah. states that were there trying to, to help out on the highways fix everything. So, you know, God bless those guys. Um, but, yeah, 10 years ago from Hurricane Sandy. Now, I know there's been other hurricanes that were worse in other areas of the country. But guess what? I don't live in those areas of the country. So everything is everything is relative to what you experience. Correct. In this case. I know, know Katrina I mean? like, was worse. I know Andrew was worse. I know all of that stuff. Yeah, We just weren't there for that. We were know? not there for that. Uh, the one that just happened recently down in Florida that hit Fort Myers and Naples and uh, the Punta Gorda area uh, area that didn't it was supposed to hit Tampa, but it didn't really. I'm forgetting the name of that hurricane. That was only like a month ago. And they had, um, they got hit pretty hard. Complete devastation like, down cousin, there. My cousin took a direct hit. He was in like Sarasota between like Tampa and like Naples or whatever. But luckily, he didn't have a lot of damage. I mean, he just had a house that was just built. Right. And like, I don't know if you've seen a house that was just built in Florida, but it's literally just like, here's ten thousand cinder blocks. Here's a house. Like, it's not falling down. And like, <laughs> that's basically what happened. He's like, it shook a little, but it, there was no worries that it would. Uh, uh, just fall or anything. Jordan in the chat going back to Giddles trashing the storm for not reading the sign. Stop literacy shaming the weather. Giddles. Well, it should have read the sign. It would have known it wasn't welcome here. And so now we talk shit about it for ten years. And storms probably feels horrible. Wasn't the Simpsons too, where there was one storm coming down the street and stopped for the red light so the other storm could go down the other way yes. and then light go, and then it went. Yeah, okay. That in their hurricane chow with the cat oh, food crossed out. I use that meme. Every Everybody does. Everybody does. Every time a storm. Because it's perfect. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's got the cat on it. Got to get all my hurricane chow. chow. 
All right. So, yeah, 10 years of uh, dealing with uh, Hurricane Sandy. <laughs>